on, celebrate right there. Put your hands together. Magnify him. to come into your presence, God. 
we thank you and we give you praise in advance for the victory that's already been won. Oh God, Lord, we come today, God, with expectation, oh God, Lord, for what you're going to do, for what you're going to be, God, Lord, for how you're going to move in this place, God. Now I pray for everyone that's here, oh God, Lord, that they might have an open eye, an open ear, God, Lord, to hear your word on tonight, God. We pray for healing, for deliverance, God, Lord. We pray for to be set free in the name of Jesus, oh God, Lord. If there's anything here that's not like you, God, move it right now. Destroy it right now, God, Lord, and give us peace, love, joy, and happiness as we proclaim your glory on tonight because your name is above all names, God. We claim victory in Jesus' name, and it is so. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise and celebrate him in his place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise tonight. Come on, give God some praise tonight. We'll change the song right here.
Transformation Conference 2013 is scheduled October the 16th through the 20th. Amen. 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 Don't forget Bible study Thursday, noonday. Amen. Married couples and those who are engaged to be married, see Elder Liz Taylor immediately after service in the Inspiration Station. Amen. There will be a dome meeting uh, Thursday, September the 26th at 7 p.m. Amen. Those who need to be there, be there. Anyone interested in being a part of our street scene initiative, the next meeting is Thursday the 26th at 6 p.m. Our first day out will be Saturday, September the 28th. See Minister Carla and Elder Baxter for more information. Sunday, September the 29th, from 2 to 4 p.m., ministers' intercessors will be at the Columbus uh, Courthouse Square, downtown Dayton, praying for the city and for anyone who requests prayer. All members are invited. See Elder Baxter for more details. Stilettos to Sneakers Oasis House Annual 5K Walk will be held on Friday, September the 27th, at 7 p.m. at Riverscape. Registration begins at 5.30 p.m. on Friday. There are registration forms on the glass showcase. Amen. Media Ministry is having a meeting on Monday, September the 30th at 6 p.m. We need everyone there. Everyone needs to be there that is a part of that ministry. Amen. What would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? What would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage and let your hearts be stout and enduring. Wait Yes, wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, we magnify you on this evening. Lord, we wait for you. We expect you to do something great in this season, God. Our eyes of our understanding are being enlightened that we may know what is the hope of your calling for us, oh God. Let us walk worthy of the vocation where which we have been called, God. Turn us and help us to turn away from evil, oh God. In the name of Jesus, forgive us for our sins on this day, oh God. Cleanse us and we shall be cleansed. Wash us and we shall be washed, restoring us a right and loyal spirit on this evening, O oh God. Answer our prayers. Be attentive unto us on tonight, God, as we yield our will to your will, God, that our plans might be established and succeed, O oh God. We ask that you lift Elder Baxter up to your very heart, O oh God. Give him your heart and your mind on tonight. Let him speak as the oracle of God. Give us revelation and illumination, O oh God, of what your word says. Teach us how to apply this very word to our lives, God. Give him endurance power to get through what he has to do on tonight, oh God. For the assignment is great, God. We settle ourselves down in the spirit that we'll be able to receive a life transforming word of encouragement and empowerment on tonight, God. We bless you for this worship service, God. We ask that you continually bless our bishop in his absence, oh God. Bless him indeed, God, and continue to enlarge his coast, God. Teach us to dig our stakes down and our tents into the ground deeper, oh God, that we can go beyond what we know, God, beyond what we're familiar with, oh God. Help us grow, God, in the name of Jesus. We glorify you and we give this service over to you. The atmosphere is set, God, for your Holy Spirit to reign, and it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Somebody give him glory. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet tonight. Just for a few minutes of worship. Come on. Come on, lift your hands in his presence. Come on and open up your mouth and worship him. Oh.
We forget about what we came through, but we worship you. We honor you. We seek your face. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Oh. We take this time and reverence you, Lord. Oh. Realizing that if it was not for you, we wouldn't be here tonight. We worship you, yes, Lord. We cast our cares on you. Come on and worship him. Open up your mouth, yes. Open up your mouth, yes, and tell God who he is to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Begin to worship him. Oh. As we come before your presence, we honor you alone. So we lift up our voices as a trumpet held in you. Come before your presence, As we Lord. Come before your presence. We honor you alone. We honor you alone. So we lift up our so voices. We lift up our voices. As trumpets. As
When I worship, I look like you. Oh, I worship God. I worship you. I come to worship you. I come to worship you. I come to worship you. Come on and worship him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Open up your mouth and worship. Come on. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, yes, sir.
about you, yeah. I love to worship you. I love to worship. I really do, yes I do. I love to worship you. I love to worship. I lift my hands in your presence, God, and I worship. I love yeah. To I love to worship. Love on God. Love to worship you. I love to worship. Forget about your name. I day. really do. I love to worship you. Forget about what's going on at home. What happened on the job. Hallelujah. Sometimes we just need to get caught up in God. Not in our situations, not in our problems, not in our pain, not in our proclivities. Just God and just worship. Doesn't matter who's on the left or who's on the right of you. Hallelujah. Let your focus be Christ. Hallelujah. He loves to hear that we love him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love to worship you. I love to worship. I love to worship you. I love to worship. afraid to engage God. Somebody's on the brink of a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Keep pressing in. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Hallelujah. Your deliverance is in his presence. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. You've been in a storm for a while, but in this present, the sun is about to shine on your life. But you got to keep pressing. Don't worry about what the person on either side of you is doing. Just keep pressing. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Bless your name, Jesus. Keep pressing. Even if you got to travail for a minute, keep pressing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, it's opening up. It's opening up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the release, Father. Thank you for the deliverance, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the breakthrough, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. You were in the outer courts. Now you're in the inner courts. Keep proceeding to the holies of holies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Love to worship you, O oh God. Hallelujah. You are the holy other. No one compares to you, Jesus. Just keep on moving closer closer. Yes, yes. Jesus, just get closer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Closer. Just keep getting closer. Hallelujah. Closer. Let go of your inhibitions. Closer. Get in his presence. Closer. Hallelujah. Closer. Just to be close to you, yeah. Jesus. It's my desire, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. It's pressing your presence. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the word begin to illuminate in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Keep pressing your way closer. Closer. Hallelujah. Love to worship. Love to worship. Love to worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I hear you. Meet him at the throne. I hear you, Jesus. Meet him at the throne. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Bless you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. The atmosphere. Hallelujah. Established by our worship. Make it conducive for healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh God. Let your healing take place. Have your way. Hallelujah. We come to electrify the atmosphere so you can have your way. Stand in awe of you. Midst of your glory. Lord, have your way. We need you to move right now. Have your way. 
Our lives are surrendered to you. Yes, yes. Say, Jesus, have your way. Move by your power, Lord. Move by your spirit, Lord, in this place. Yes, God. Have your way. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Jesus. Clouds are rolling away. The sun is shining in. This atmosphere now for miracles have your way oh Lord this place this place we're expecting you oh God move like never before have your way have your way Hallelujah. Give him a hand of praise. Hallelujah. You believe that he's worthy. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Move by your spirit, Jesus, have your way. Yes. Hallelujah. He's good. Hallelujah. We've been facing stuff, we've been dealing with stuff hallelujah you may be seated you may be seated thank you Jesus hallelujah mm. give an honor to bishop the angel of this house atmosphere is so sweet I'm trying to move on but I'm mm. you've really been pressing for a breakthrough in your worship and the enemy has been attacking you in your worship so much so that you've given up on worshiping praise is easy because it reminds you of what he's done but it's worship that brings you into intimacy with him so the enemy doesn't mind you praising him but he really doesn't want you to worship him but if you would worship him the shift that you're looking for will take place. 
have to let go of what you've been harboring and just worship your way to his presence. And you may not be able to do that in a service. You're going to have to do that in your home. And you're going to have to say to yourself, I'm determined to get in his face. That means the TV's off. The phone is off. Even if you got to close the blinds and just worship until you find yourself prostrate on your face in his presence. And at that moment, you're going to begin to see the shift you've been looking for. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you, Bishop. We love you, sir. We honor you. I know I'm backtracking, but like I just got caught in a moment. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Father. God, you're good. We declare your majesty in the earth. We know that we're nothing without you. So we surrender our lives by the lifting of our hands. And we say, have your way, Jesus. We desire to move upward, closer toward you. It's time out for calling you down. We need to come up in our walk, in our praise, in our worship, in our relationship, in our lives with you, Jesus. So God, we decrease, I decrease, you increase. God, and we say have your way tonight. Whatever you want to do in the midst of us, in the midst of this band of brothers and sisters who've come together collectively to worship your name, and give honor to you for all that you do for us daily, Jesus. So we thank you, Father, for your wisdom and your word. We thank you for your guidance and your way. We thank you for your deliverance and your healing. We thank you for your blessings and your breakthroughs. Service is yours. Have your way, Jesus. In your blessed and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Everybody doing all right tonight? God is good. Thank you. Bless you. Give your name glory. Hallelujah. Well, <laughs> for a title tonight no amen for the tonight title we have dead weight dead weight dead weight Turn with me in your Bibles to Hebrews 12 and 1 in the Amplified. That's what I'll be reading out of the Amplified. And it reads as such. Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary weight, and that sin which so readily deftly and cleverly clings to and entangles us and let us run with patience endurance and steady 
and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Verse 2, looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief, and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Dead weight. I don't know about y'all, but for me, it seems that I've been holding on to some stuff that has my attitude a little jacked up. It's as if I've been wearing my emotions on my sleeve. <clears throat> Dealing with things that have me shook, not knowing what the next move should be or who even to trust. Been frustrated, aggravated with some folk in some situations. But then come to the realization that I'm overweight. Spiritually, I mean, naturally, yeah, I am overweight, but speaking spiritually, carrying and harboring some stuff that I thought I let go, but all along it was lying dormant in me, growing in me like a tumor. But today, I declare I'm losing this dead weight. I don't know about you if you've ever been at this place. To where things that you thought you let go were still on the inside of you. Some folk that you thought you forgave, you had forgiven. I mean, we've got to get rid of this destructive pattern that brings on unhealthy spiritual weight. Like for me, one of my issues was unforgiveness. Have you ever just had someone that just do you wrong? I mean, wrong. Unthinkable wrong. And you being a Christian that you are, said I forgive you. I mean, real forgiveness, where you do not remember the offense anymore, and you treat them as though they never offended you. I mean, that kind of forgiveness. Well, seen a dude that did me wrong. I was in my truck driving up uh, 3rd Street. He was turning on the 3rd Street. He was on a motorcycle. Now, had I let him go, and really forgave him, I would have, beep, beep, what's up, man? <laughs> but the first thought that came to my mind when I seen him turn the corner was, I ought to run that nigga over. I'm being honest, but that's the devil. That's the enemy. That's something in a me that I thought I let go of. That's something in me that I thought I got rid of, but not realizing that I was harboring this thing for all this time because I hadn't seen him. See, that's the problem with most of us. We'll say, yeah, I forgive you, but long as I ain't got to see you, then I'm walking in forgiveness. But the real issue is, I forgive you, but when I see you, do I still feel the same way? Do I still say, well, I forgive you all as well. Give me a hug, let me show you some love, let me bless you. No, I wanted to run him over and then back up over and run over again. And I said, whoa, Jesus, help me. I didn't repent yet, but I'm going to. I'm be, I mean, I'm just being honest. Didn't know that that thing was in me. And when we allow unforgiveness to sit in harbor, it creates bitterness. Now you got a root deep in you and we plucking weeds off the top, but if we don't get to that root that's deep on the inside, then we'll never forgive that person that offends us. I don't know, ain't nobody playing Candy Crush. 
Hallelujah. Was that my fault? No, I'm joking. Amen. But I know that I got to let go of this excess weight that's killing me spiritually. And even in the natural, I've lost some weight, bless God. Amen. I lost a couple pounds, a couple few pounds. Amen. Had surgery. Amen. I ain't, ain't going to lie. I couldn't do it on my own. Need to help. Need to help. Need to help. You know, uh, every restaurant was calling me. I ain't going to just say one name. All of them was calling me. I drive by. I was like, I was like Pookie on crack. It's calling me. It's calling me, you know, you know. And then when you're frustrated with stuff, when you're going through stuff, and like, I mean, you know, I was an emotional eater. I don't know how I became an emotional eater, but anyway, I was an emotional eater. So when I was frustrated and stressed, I would go eat. Wouldn't even be hungry. And we'll go eat. So amen, but amen. I'm delivered. In Jesus' name, I declare it. But I know that there are things that were, you know, that it crept up on me. That thing shocked me. Because I didn't think I was like that, but it was there. And I know that's something that needs to go that I have to let go of. Because it don't stifle him. You know, he just said, I apologize. Even if he didn't mean it, he gone. He doing what he doing. I'm the one that's struggling. I'm the one that's bro uh, 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 jacking up my relationship with God. I'm the one that's messing up my walk because it's hard. You know, I'm like, man. So maybe I should just go talk to him and take somebody with me to hold me back just in case I decide to jump. But knowing that I need to let it go. And Psalms 55 and 22 in the Amplified says... Cast your burdens on the Lord, releasing the weight of it. It's the weight of it that hurts us. It's the weight of it that causes us to struggle. And he will sustain you. He will never allow the consistently righteous to be moved, made to slip, fall, or fail. So if I'm giving what's bothering me, if I'm giving what's hindering me, if I give what's holding me down to God, then I ain't got to worry about making a mistake. I ain't got to worry about messing up. I ain't got to worry about failing. We got to remember that God's name is on the line. So if we say we're Christians, the world is looking at us because we say we're Christians. And so God got to do some stuff to keep his name intact. Got many of us worried about if our name okay, Bump who they talking about. Who cares if they don't like you? Bump all that. We need to make sure God's name stays intact. I don't need to be faithful because of David. I need to be faithful because of who I say I am in Christ. So that they look at me and they see the Christian. Not David. Unforgiveness is a burden that we tend to hold on to. And then when you have unforgiveness, you end up uh, uh, looking for revenge. Then your prayer can't even be effective because with unforgiveness, you end up wishing, on one hand you'll say, God bless them. I know they're my enemy, God bless them. Then on the flip side, you're like, Lord, kill, ooh, God, cause this to happen, cause them to lose their job. Cause that ain't, that ain't Christ-like. In fact, we should be like, Lord, bless them. Give them a promotion. And then speak to their heart and let them come recompense for the wrong they did to me if that's the case. But you should pray for God to bless them. Let them be in health. Let them be made whole. And if they're not saved, let them receive your salvation. That'll be the ultimate revenge to make them get saved. To let God speak to their heart until they crumble. And say, no more of me, God. I want you. And they get saved. That's the ultimate revenge. Because now what you did to me, you can't do to nobody else if you're really a child of God. Another issue that, I don't know if y'all got it, but I got it. Man, we have to stop worrying about the outcome of things. Yeah, we'll be in the midst of some mess and we'll be in the midst of a situation and it may not look like it's supposed to. It may not look you know, God said, I'm going to deliver you, but do what you want. is like, Lord, it don't look like deliverance. It look like it's more trouble. Either we will trust God or we won't. And I know there are times where I struggle with this. I mean, for real, real time. I mean, it's like, God, 
and you just left me out here to die. What are you doing? I don't see nothing that you said. Then I got to pray what it says in Mark, 24, Mark 9 and 24. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Because this thing don't look like what you said it would look like. But if we really believe and we really trust him in God, see, we can't pray and worry at the same time. Either we're going to pray and trust or we're going to worry and just fall apart. But if we trust him, then Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 in the King James Version says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. That means don't lean on how it looked to me. Because my understanding can be screwed up and jacked up at times. I mean, if the Lord promised you a million dollars, and what, the first thing we're going to say, how are you going to give me the lottery numbers? Not you're going to give me an ideal that after I work the ideal, it'll regenerate a couple million. No, if you want a quick, fast, in a hurry, I don't want to work for it. I don't want to earn it. Just give it to me. That's my thought. You know, guys, if you wanted me to be a millionaire, you could have gave me the six numbers to the Powerball. That's $223 million I would have walked away with. But God says, I'll give you an ideal that'll cause wealth if you work it the way I'm telling you. We got to quit looking for that right now wealth. Because really right now money is rich. Wealth is generational. So somebody got to start along the way. So if God done told you your family going to be million, going to be wealthy, then that means you got to start it off. You may not be wealthy. You might just be well off for a while. But at the outcome or the end of it, because of what God said, your children's children is going to inherit wealth. But it says, trust in the Lord in all thy ways. With all thine heart and lean unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct my paths. He gonna tell me which way to go. And then even regardless of what it looked like, at the end of it, Romans 8 and 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that watch this love God. Not everybody. And when we say love God, we ain't talking about saying, oh God, I love you. God, no, no, he's talking, love God when your life says you love God to them who are called according to his purpose. He ain't talking about lip service because, you, you know, to be honest, many a men have used I love you to be intimate with a woman. So you can't run that kind of game on God and say, I love you to get what you want. He said, okay, if you love me, show me. Because one scripture in the Bible says, for them that love me ought to obey me. So if you ain't obeying him, then you can't say you love him. Say, I like him or I like the ideal of God, but to be in a real relationship, to really love God, then that means I must obey what he tells me to do. First Peter 5, 7 in the Amplified says, casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all. That means when you lay them on them, leave them. Don't pick them back up. Don't start worrying, oh God, what you gonna do? The deadline is approaching what you gonna do. Just trust thee with thine whole heart. So we gonna all our concerns once and for all on him for he cares for you affectionately and he cares about you watchfully so his, 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 he cares for you lovingly and he's concerned about what's going on in your life he's watching over you he's not gonna let us fall he's not gonna let us fail even when it looks like we fell and we still winning I'm not just that's, that's in my spirit even when I don't look like I'm winning I'm winning because I'm connected with God. How can I lose with God? If God be for me, who can be against me? No matter how many enemies I got, yeah, we don't, don't nobody want no enemies. I don't want no enemies, but they there, I got them anyway. Let them be. Because if God is for me, who can be against me? So even when it don't look like I'm winning, I'm winning. And 
And one of the biggest weights we carry is our past. And that's the trick of the enemy. <laughs> and honestly, some people. Some folk just don't want to see you doing good. And I'm not talking about just financially or having more stuff and things, but I'm talking about living life better. You're not always looking over your shoulder. You ain't worried about no rumors. You're in a good place. You're God-centered and focused on him. So they bring up your past to everybody or they try and get you to hang out and do the things you used to. And that's just so they can tear you down. Because if they really loved you, they wouldn't try to take you and get you to do something that they know is offensive to your relationship with God. You really love me and you want me to go sin? No, how can you love me? And your desire for my love for you is so, is so real that I'm talking to you because I want you to go to heaven. So I'm ministering the word to you. I'm telling you God loves you. I'm living a life, a godly life before you so you can see by an example. And you want to come and say, let's go do this? That's what we used to do. And I'm amazed at all the people that I know that's my age. I'm 41. They're 41 and above. And still living like they in high school. Now, we in the city of Dayton. This is a country town. It ain't that much partying in the city of Dayton. I know folk that go out every weekend and party and stay out all hours of, what in this, I'm like, Dayton? Stuff closed at three and four in Dayton? And there ain't a restaurant? So what y'all do, y'all go to the club till two and then go sit at McDonald's or, uh, or, or, or uh, Burger King or something till four? Ain't nothing open like that. This is Dayton. It's three, it's three clubs and two of them closed. But I guess, I mean, if you like it, I love it. Just pray the rapture don't come while we in our debauchery. While we in our mess, doing what we ain't supposed to be doing. We're not passing judgment. But we say we love God. Something ought to show. I ain't saying we perfect because God knows we all fall short of his glory. But there ought to be something you ought to have been delivered from something. You can't be holding on to everything. I'm a Christian. Man, I had somebody, and I'm going to say this. Lord, no, I love them. I had somebody say to me, well, they didn't say it to me, but they said, they was talking about Jesus turning water into wine, because they, they said they was going to drink. They was having a party, and they said, all the Christians that, uh, all the uptight Christians, that's what they said, all the uptight Christians, who have a problem with people drinking alcohol, don't come to the party. Keep your boring tail at home. Hey Amen. Okay. And somebody made a comment. Somebody said something. It was on Facebook. Somebody said something. And then I said, then I said, well, they said, well, ain't that the reason why Jesus turned water into wine? And so I said, well, I don't think that was the main reason that he turned water into wine. I'm sure there's more to it than getting drunk. And besides, if Jesus turned water into wine, I don't think people was riding on donkeys drunk. I honestly don't believe that Jesus, he turned it into wine. And you gotta think, it wasn't no speed up process. It went out. I mean, Jesus had to do it where he was fermented grapes, grape juice. It wasn't nobody making alcohol, trying to hurry up and get you drunk so they could sell a million bottles. So wasn't nobody riding on a donkey drunk. Wasn't nobody rolling in carriages drunk. For the purpose of celebration, it was a wedding. They had a good time. But I don't believe nobody left there intoxicated. And if they were intoxicated, then the spirit must have jumped on them. But it's our past. Don't worry about no reason to get right to God-centered. 
and you focus on him. They bring up all this stuff to try to get you to fall away just so they can talk about you. And they can say, and he or and she supposed to be saved. So we got to be careful of the enemy's tactics and his tricks to get us caught up in hanging out with folk. Now I'm just saying, you know, we got family that we love. And you know, you go to a picnic and some uh, picnics, they doing what they do. But you, you know, that's kind of reunion. All you can say is, well, just don't offer me none and don't smoke it in my face because I don't want to get a contact. But at the same token, I'm not going to run with you and then, not my name, but allow his name to be ruined because I say I'm a Christian and people see and say, well, look what you're doing. And you're supposed to be saved. So I ain't got to get up and go shouting on Sunday morning and doing all that stuff. I can stay in the bed and do exactly what you do. So that's why we got to watch our walls. But that comes with getting rid of dead weight. Those things that hold us down and hold us back. I mean, the flesh is insatiable. It has cravings and desires that it wants that we can never satisfy. And the problem with us is we try to satisfy. And we'll never, it'll never work. It'll never happen. If your, if your flesh say, I want this and I want it every day, you'll die trying to do it. You'll try, die trying to satisfy because it'll never be satisfied. And this is it. If you don't believe it, have you ever been in a restaurant and you're eating and you're full? I mean, you're stuffed, but you keep eating. You can't even move. I mean, you're at the point where you're like, I got to unbuckle my pants just to sit and be comfortable. But you keep eating. That's because you, your, your, flat, your, your b- belly is full. Your body's saying quit, but your flesh is saying, mm, boy, this chicken is the bomb. And you keep eating. So, be careful what we do and who we hang around. Like I said, some people are are assailants. They're really looking to destroy us. You might have did something to somebody in high school. You done forgot all about it. You didn't even think it was an issue. They've been plotting all this time to get you back. And they try to hit you where it hurts the most. But in Philippians 3, 13 and 14, this is the attitude that we have to take. In the King James. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus that I'm going to keep pushing. I'm not going to let my past hold me back. Listen, if you got an issue with my past, if you think that that's where I should be, you can have that address. I'm moving forward. I'm trying to get to glory. There's some things that God had promised me, and the only way I can get to it is by pressing in him. I can't st- I'm sorry if I offended you 5, 6, 10, 12 years ago, but I'm a new person. I'm a different man. I'm not that same joker that I was back then, so I'm pressing to get somewhere because God has destiny on my life, and if you was wise, you'll get right along with me because God has a plan for your life can I have Philippians can I have it in the message Bible but 12 through 14 please I'm not saying that I have it all together because that's the first thing they say when you say you saved you think you got it all together no no I don't that I haven't made I have that I have made it but I am well on my way reaching out for Christ who has so wondrously reached out for me Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running, and I'm not turning back. So you need to tell some folk that you've been connected to that's stuck in your past that I ain't turning back. I'm moving ahead. I'm pressing forward. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow ain't promised. So I'm going to live right before God in my present. So it's time to get rid of things that cause us to be spiritually sluggish. 
before I started losing weight, before I had surgery, man, I was in a horrible place. I ain't going to even lie. Being, being big as I was, I mean, I'm still big, but I'm getting small. Amen. But I, I, I was sluggish. I mean, I could walk. I could walk around the parking lot one time, and you would be like, you ran? You, I mean, that's how heavy I was breathing. You'd have been like, dude, you just run? But letting go of some of this weight, I feel a little lighter. I'm able to walk four miles without breathing heavy and feel good about it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Amen, bless God. That's a God thing. Don't get me wrong. When I stop, I need to sit down and rest. And I might even lay down to take a nap. But the fact that the matter, while I'm doing it, I ain't breathing, I'm not succumbing, I'm not about to pass out. I just keep moving and I keep pressing. But spiritually, when we get some of this weight, some of this negativity off of us, then we'll get a little lighter. And we want to be spiritually fit. We want to be spiritually fit. So we got to let go of some of these attitudes and these old mindsets, the old thinking, the old nature. We're new creatures in Christ. So our attitudes should be new. Our mindset should be new and because we, we have a new nature. We shouldn't come into Christ acting the same way. When we get saved and we get saved for real, folk that knew us in our past shouldn't be able to recognize us. I'm still acting the same way I was when I was 19, 20, 25, 30, 39. There's something wrong. There hasn't been no growth, no maturity. 40 and a half. No, amen. There was no growth, no maturity. No change. I'm holding on to the old nature because I like how I feel when I do what the old nature wants me to do. Instead of just letting go and seeing where this God thing takes us. <laughs> Scriptures all in the Bible letting us know, I got you. I'm going to take care of you. And if you live right, your children are going to be all right. That's incentive enough. If I live right, he gonna make sure my children okay. Leaving a legacy. It ain't always about money, stuff and things. Sometimes you should want your kids to be like, man, my mom or my dad is a Christian. They love the Lord. Their walk is right. It should be to the point that even if your, especially if you have adult children, even if they ain't saved, they honor the Christ in you. And they ain't about to say nothing out the way that's going to offend you. And they ain't about to let nobody else say something out the way that'll offend you. New nature, new attitude, new way of thinking, new mindset, Christ-like. Chasing after him harder. Getting rid of some stuff, some unhealthy relationships. Get rid of people that suck the life out of you. Stress you out all the time. Keep you frustrated. Always negative. Ain't never got nothing nice to say about anybody putting everybody down. And then they want to be your best friend. So if they talking about them to you, they talk about you to them. Just busybodies. I just want to talk about folk because it's something. Always want to know what's going on with you. Spying out your land. Mm, look, you got a new pair of shoes today. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Girl, you know he went out and bought them Jordans and he didn't even pay his DB&L. Don't know what's going on. Girl, you know he done went and got a new outfit. Mm-hmm. Ain't even got gas. Had to get gas money from me. Mm-hmm. The devil is a lie. But we got to make declarations. You got to declare that you're getting your joy back. You're getting your peace back. You're getting your passion back. 
Look, we should desire to be fat, not overweight and not pretty hot and tempting, but fat, faithful, accountable, and teachable. We should be able to be in that vein to live a life where God can choose and use us. Not because he just has to, because ain't nobody else around, but because he desires us. We should make the father of this house proud. Yeah, they can run around the neighborhood, all these other churches saying they play in church, they the church of the exes or whatever. But when they look at our lives under a microscope, they see we're faithful, we're accountable, and we're teachable. We ain't like everybody else running from church to church trying to find words that's tickling our ears. We're here for getting sound doctrine. So that means if we get beat up, we get uh, stumped on, we get whooped, so be it. That's just going to make me get better. That's just showing me that I got to do what I need to do to make sure I'm in line with what my daddy's been teaching me. I don't want to be a bastard child. I want to be a child that makes my dad proud. So yeah, I'm going to try my best to be faithful, accountable, and teachable even if it causes me to lose friends, to lose family, to lose associates, to lose acquaintances. We got to quit worrying, worrying about who's connected to us. We need to know who really loves us. See, the surgery I had was called the ruin why. And uh, what I got from that, you know, when, when God began to speak to you about something, he break it down. And he, the one thing he said about the wrong why, he was just like, you need to find out, are you in and why? Why are you connected to me? Why do you want to hang around me? Are you here to help me manifest? Or, or are you here to rob me? Are you my assailant? Or is, your, is your assignment from Satan? Or are you here for help? I need to know who's on my side for real. Because I know I got God, but I don't need nobody on the left side of me talking about I got your back and you steadily stabbing me in it. I could be by myself for all that. I do enough damage to my own self. I don't need help. So it should be our desire to make his name great in the earth. And yeah, we can come in here and shout all day long. Yeah, we can lift our hands up and worship all day long. But how are we living before the people? Are they seeing the Christ that we proclaim is in us? So let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, every unnecessary way. It's folk that you hold on to. You love them, and that's good. But your relationship with Christ has to be more important than your relationship with them. And and if they're really for you, when you let them go and you pursue Christ, they're going to see your life model the life of a Christian. And at some point, they're going to say, you know what, man, what, what, what do I got to do to be saved? In this walk, we can't be afraid of losing folk. can't be I love my wife but if she go tomorrow I still got Jesus hallelujah because that's the main thing I love my kids but if tomorrow they say dad I can't stand you please don't ever talk to me okay I love you but I got Jesus if my friends and my family say we done with you I'll hurt, I'll cry, but I'll get over it because I got Jesus. Because in the end, watch this, in the end, what the devil take away, God will replace. Yeah, I mean, we're going to trip for a minute. Don't nobody want to do, you know, your family to leave you, your, your spouse to leave you. You don't want that. But if it happens... 
But if it happens, you know, you pray, you worship. If they don't come back, you continue to pray for them. God bless them. Keep them safe. Let them be connected to your will. And then you keep worshiping. And then you just, well, somewhere along the way, I must have made a mistake in my choosing. So God going to give me who was meant for me. Because I'm just, I'm, 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 under the, I'm under the understanding that where God has designed us to go, everybody can't go. So if God got you going to this level and you trying to take a bag of bond who ain't ready for that level, they ain't going to do nothing but cause you to fall down because they ain't ready for that level. But God is going to make sure he said, be ye not unequally, unequally yoked with unbelievers. I don't think that's just predicated on believing of God. I mean, if they don't believe like you believe. If you sitting there connected with people, we're going to touch and agree that God can heal. And they're like, I don't believe God can do it. You better let that joker's hand go. And go catch, grab a hand of somebody that believe like you. God said he's going to bless us. I don't believe he's going to do it. No, get off of me. I need somebody that's in line and in sync that's going to agree with me. All I'm saying, and I'm closing, is we got to let go of the dead weight. That's, that's, that's attitudes. <clears throat> Egos, some folk, some places, and some things. Because ultimately, it'll hold you up. And you'll miss out on all what God has intended you to get trying to make sure they with you. If it's of God, no matter how high you go, it might be straggling along, but they're going to make it. Sometimes you got to let them have their own journey with Christ. You walk in the wilderness yourself. Go ahead and get that training. Go ahead and build that relationship. Because you can't get into heaven on my coattails. Because the Bible said I'm scarcely saved. So if you're on my coattails, you might not have a chance. <laughs> if I'm scarcely saved then you might not get in. You might want to let my coattails on and get scarcely saved yourself. Amen. God bless you. Amen, amen. Go ahead and give God a hand of praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's good. He's good.